Okay, hello people, this is the third segment. So now we're going to do the assembly process. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, anchor the, uh, the engine, uh, the, the block right there, the engine block. Then I'm going to move everything, uh, translate everything uh, so that, uh, uh, let me see now, so that uh, we have a, an easier time in assembling it. Okay, so the, not this. Uh, there's a connecting rod and there's the crankshaft. Okay, good. First thing, we're going to assemble the crankshaft. Okay, so we have coincidence between the vertical plane, the exit plane of the crank. So there's the exit plane of the crank and the exit plane of the block. So exit plane of the block right there. Okay, and then we say, Okay, and then coincidence between the axis of the sh crank, this, and uh, we're going to hide this, and the axis of the bearing of the block. Okay, so let me bring this thing back into the show mode, right there. All right, then I'm going to install or uh, actually assemble the, the connecting rod. So... Uh, uh, coincidence between the axis of this hole and the axis of the shaft here. There's nothing to update because these were just translated so the lines already are lined up. And coincidence between the exit plane of the <coughs> of the uh, of the crank exit exit plane of the crank. Uh, wait a minute. Coincidence between the exit plane of the crank. Oh, I guess, yeah, I have to say okay here, sorry. Uh, coincidence between the exit plane of the crank and the exit plane of the connecting rod. Now, I see that it's right here. You see that? It's right here, or you can get it from the tree. Good. And uh, that takes care of these two. Then we're going to insert the pin inside of... Uh, I don't know, uh, let, let's put yeah, the pin inside of that. So coincidence, coincidence between this axis of this hole and the axis of the pin. Already these are, uh, you know, these are uh, aligned and coincidence between the exit plane of the connecting rod and the exit plane of the pin. And finally, I'm going to put the uh, the, uh, the piston in there. So coincidence, <coughs> coincidence, between the exit plane of the piston and the exit plane of the pin. There's the pin. Okay, right there. Exit plane of the pin. It's easier to pick it from the tree. And coincidence between the axis of the hole and the axis of the uh, the pin. Okay. Now let's uh, move these apart and then update see if they go in the original configuration. So let's see now. Uh, for example, translate in the <laughs> translate in the y direction like this. Maybe move it up. Maybe tilt it a little bit about the y axis. Right about the y-axis like that okay so uh, how about uh, doing a little bit of rot rotation here maybe translate this thing to the uh, I don't know in the y direction in the y direction and say okay now if I update they should go back to the original configuration so there and notice that everything does the way it's supposed to accept the piston so what we need to do, we have to create a coincidence between the axis of the piston and the axis of the engine block. Good. Now, let me use the move, uh, move feature in order to see if I, see if I can actually uh, move, uh, move the pieces. So manipulate, rotation about this axis, and check this box to respect all the constraints, and let's see. Ah. Good sign. See that? Okay. Good, good, good. 
Now, I'm going to show you that if we go ahead and use the magic wand to create the joints, you will have two degrees of freedom. One of the degrees of freedom is the rotation of this pin. This pin can spin about its own axis, uh, about its own axis uh, uh, within that piston. This is similar to the issue, the situation that we had with the robotic arm that we did yesterday. And I had to create, in order to, to get rid of that particular, uh, uh, get rid of that particular uh, spinning motion, I had to take two planes uh, from the pin and from the, uh, from the piston and make the angle the same. So let's see now. Here is the angle. This is the angle constraint. You know, I'm doing this thing ahead of time. Read the book and you uh, maybe have a better idea of what's going on. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the angle between the XY plane of the pin and the XY plane of the connecting rod or, or, the, or, or, or the piston, actually. The piston, keep it as it is. It's about 17 degrees and I'm going to say OK. What this will do, it will actually create a rigid joint between the pin and the piston. You'll see. First of all, we save everything. Then we're going to go to the digital mockup, DMU kinematics. Get the magic wand out right there. A new mechanism, mechanism one. Auto create. Okay. And let us check our joint. Let's check the joints. Let me collapse these. Okay. So, right there, 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 and there. Okay. A revolute between the block and the crank. That's this. You can see that. Uh, well, we have a planer between the block and the pin. Oh, that's okay. Well, let's, let, let, let's keep it. Uh, cylindrical between the block and the piston. Okay. A revolute between the, uh, let's see now, this is between the connecting rod and the, the crank right there. This is the rigid one that I'm talk I was talking about, between the pin and the piston. Uh, that, that angle constraint made this a rigid joint. This one I don't think is necessary and as a matter of fact I'm confident that I can delete it without changing anything. Let's see. You see, nothing changed. Degree of freedom is still one. And what we can do is we can make this, uh, this revolute joint between the, the crank and the block angle driven crank and the block right there we make it angle driven going 0 to 360 degrees we say okay and mechanism can be simulated let's make a cartoon let's make a cartoon so uh, simulation drag this thing all the way to the end insert rewind change it to anything but one and make it the arrow chase each other so there is the cartoon now i'm not going to bother about putting physics into this thing because you can you can specify the rpm or the angular velocity of the the crank you can for example put a speed and acceleration sensor on say the piston to find out what is the acceleration of it what's the velocity of it and things like that those are steps that you can, uh, uh, you know, we have already done and you can follow the book to do that. I basically highlighted the process of making this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, assembly. So rewind, okay, save everything. And once again, I want to remind everybody that you have to submit your assembly with all the parts in that folder on the exam okay if you just give us the assembly and you don't give us the parts there's no way we can mark your assignment you mark your test 
And if there are plus generated, you know, uh, the trace generated, the trace, uh, you can actually arrange it so that it is uh, kept here in your screen. If you select, if you make it as a separate part, make sure you save it, put it in your folder. If you generate velocities, acceleration plot, use a screen capture, etc., to uh, you know, to put it in your folder and submit it to 